name is Casey. I get to be your advocate for Camp Caroline. Um, how many of you have been to Camp Caroline ever? Amazing. Wonderful. How many of you have never been? Okay. Yeah, great. It, it, I cannot tell you how honored I am right now to be with you. What a beautiful worship team. What a beautiful sanctuary. What a beautiful feeling the Spirit's driving right now. I kind of feel like my heart's racing a little bit. Almost like a family reunion. You know, where you get together every couple years and there's a favorite cousin. That, you know, you get to see everybody, hey, 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 but in the back of your head, you're like, I can't wait to get my cousin. My cousin's name was Will, and he and I would do all the things that the parents told us to do. But the whole time, we're like, we're going to go to the woods. We're going to get in the woods, and then we'd spend hours together. Do you have, this, you have a cousin like that? I hope you do. Um, and that's how I feel right now. Hope your memorial, I get to come and talk about camp. Today I have certain goals, and that's definitely to up, update you if you haven't been in a while and invite you into a deeper relationship with, with how camp influences your church and how I need to remind you today that it is a big piece of your church. And I just want to start by saying thanks for having me today. Um, thanks, Emma, for coordinating it. Thanks, Kara, for coordinating it. Thanks, Viola, for coordinating it. <laughs> Um, as we get into today's, oh, well, this is interesting. My name's Casey, <laughs> and I guess we're getting ready to switch over to a different PowerPoint presentation. Today, I am going to be asking for some volunteers to interact as we go. So I need about eight people who are willing to come up to the front and hold a sign. So can anybody come on up and just hold a sign, please? You'll stay in the all the way over here.
y'all please give them another round of applause. Um, so I come out of middle school science. I taught middle school science for 10 years. And uh, it got me to a place where I started training to God. And about two and a half years later, there was a door open and it was so I could come and work at camp. When I started working at camp, I started praying to God. I said, God, what is a scriptural focus for me? What is a place that I can go and, and guide ministry for myself so that I can feel even more invested in what camp and camping ministry is about? And so we get Matthew 13, which is the parable of the sower. Before we hear from the Word of God, please pray with me. Heavenly Creator, thank you for this time and this place and for Booker Memorial Church, for all the people that are here, for the energy of the Spirit is driving through here. Thank you for the peace and the clarity that you're bringing to everyone. Please help me diminish today so that you can be exalted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So let us hear from the parable of the sower. On the same day, Jesus went out of his house, or a house, sat by the sea. A great multitude were there, and were so many he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, there was a sower who went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, where they did not have much earth. They immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was out, they were scorched because they had no roots. They were their way. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them, but others fell on good ground and yielded the crop. Some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear. By him here. And the disciples said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said, Because it's to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have an abundance, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they, seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in the prophecy is Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of the people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes are yet closed, lest they should see with their eyes and ears what their ears, excuse me, hear with their ears, lest they should turn and understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. That last sentence. May God add a blessing to the reading today. The last sentence is bolded, and, and we could argue all day long, maybe, because, you know, disciples would like to do that. Um, but that last sentence, Jesus is saying, if we understand and turn our hearts towards him, he wants to heal us. This is his ultimate, arguable message, I believe. Um, since I came out of the middle school classroom, you make an acronym for a whole lot. So please forgive me for this acronym, but this became then my passion for camp. And I will throw it to you today as your passion for a way to live. That you teach the kids that are up here and are being blessed with backpacks and, and being charged to go and be in their schools and to be loving and kind and Christian. And we're teaching our kids that. So it's a great reminder today. Wonderful, beautiful. But for camp, this is my focus. That we're there to build community. We're there to talk about advocacy. We're there to talk about mission. We're there to talk about progress. So I'm going to break down a little bit of this. If you haven't seen it in a little bit. Um, this is the new gym. And those are community members from Pamlico County. And they come in two or three times a week and they play open gym. So these guys range from 16 year olds to probably 60 year olds. And, uh, and there's ladies that come to you. And so it's a real community effort that's going on. They really embraced it. They're already calling saying, Casey, are we starting back after Labor Day? I said, yes. Um, but as far as community goes, my grandmother, arguably one of my best influences in my, all my life, her favorite scripture was 2 Timothy. For he did not give us a spirit of cowardice or of timidity in her Bible. 
but rather a spirit of power and of love and self-discipline. These guys come and they don't go to church. They don't have a church in Pimlico County. When they come, we'll do a five-minute sharing of concerns from the community. We do prayers together. Different guys lead the prayers now at this point. But we focus on scripture. I usually bring a little bit of reflection and then we play. And these guys get a chance to get out anger and to get out things that they're struggling with and the ladies that are there getting out the you know, energy that they need to. As far as camp ministry goes and building community and even your event yesterday, having a healthy place where people come and feel nurtured through Christ. Again, a charge to all of us. My favorite book on the planet, other than the Bible, I have to show you. <laughs> is the Lorax. So, you know, the Lorax, what's, what's the Lorax say? The tree gets chopped down, this little orange hairy dude pops out of the tree, and what does he say? He says, I am the Lorax. And he says, you know, Dr. Seuss describing a kind of gruff voice. I am the Lorax, and I speak for the trees. As Christians, how many people do we meet who are distraught? Depressed, over anxious, worried. They forgot how to use a voice. They may feel so lonely that they don't even feel worthy of grace. As Christians, when we talk to our kids and we encourage them the way you did this morning is gorgeous. They're, they're told to go out and find friends who need friends. When we meet people in our communities, and as based on these guys who come to those basketball and these ladies that come. Regularly, they're, they're saying things like, it's my favorite night of the week when they come to play. And they say things like, it's the best building in Pamlico. Thank you for allowing us to come in. What powerful message it is when a friend, maybe a kid, notices, oh my gosh, that child looks lonely. And they go over there because, you know, Jesus says, let the little children come to me. And the kids already figured all that out. And then we get all old and we forget, just like the scripture says. Right? So we turn towards our hearts and we watch these kids and they go and embrace each other and they notice the people who can't speak for themselves. They notice the hurt and they want to go help. And so it's a neat place to be. To consider ourselves as Christians as a big charge for us is to reinvigorate. What does it mean to advocate? To go out and find and encourage people. Because you know what? You could say, I've got a place. You know, you meet some homeless people sometimes, or I have, and they're like, I can't go anywhere. Nobody wants me in. And, you know, you got a little light of Christ, and you can say, no, hey, come and I can show you the path. And you have a welcoming home. You totally have a welcoming spirit here. And it's so wonderful to consider that sometimes we all get distraught. And we all forget. And we all feel unworthy sometimes. But we can connect with people that way and invite them. This is a second grade class. You know, for years now that they're building that big gym, they shut down the ropes course. So the ropes course is back on fire and it's totally nurturing people in Pamlico County. In particular, Arapahoe Church School, they've come eight times now with different school groups, some to end school year, some to start, some to faculty and staff. But these kids are on the whale watch, which is a big balancing act, right? And the challenge is for them to get in the middle and get balanced and then expand, but stay balanced. Get in the middle and find balance and then to expand and stay balanced. And they talk to each other, hey man, you shouldn't move that quick. Because you know, when somebody moves really quick without anybody else knowing, what happens? It throws everybody off. Right? <laughs> like literally. So there's these life lessons that these kids are getting. Caroline and I will bring as a charge today. You'll notice up there that if you had to paraphrase Camp Caroline's mission statement, which I really like yours, it's nice and uh, it's got good brevity. <laughs> and it's quick and to the point and very thoughtful. So when you break down Camp Caroline's mission for 64 years now, it's been, been about building ministers. And so when these people come and they meet me, I get to enter into a conversation about what does it mean to be Christ centered? as a lifestyle. What does it mean to actually listen to the statement from the end of the parable of the sower where Christ says, 
if you turn towards your heart and listen to your heart for directions in Christ, then he wants to heal that the rest of your path. So it's neat to think that. And before I move to the last thing, I do need two more volunteers. Because the other thing that's going on in the gym, other than basketball, is pickleball. So I need two people, please. They can be different this time. Or they can be the same. Can I get two people? This is a pickleball panel. And this is a pickleball. Alright. What's your name again? Elizabeth. And what's your name? Mason. Alright. Well, y'all give Elizabeth and Mary Sanders a round of applause. Thank you. So you might want to squeeze them a little closer together. Okay. So here's. Here's the challenge this morning. I would like you to try to volley the ball back and forth. Can, can, can you think four is a good time? Is it a good number to start with? Four times. Do you think they can do it? Yeah. 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 Alright, and we're, we're going to encourage you by counting. Yeah, you're going to hit underhanded and just try to keep in the air four times. Let's get about twos. Okay. <laughs> Get. 
by how God created them, but our culture pushes. So we can be competitive, but we don't have to be challenging each other so that we can't lift each other up. That's the pickleball meditation. <laughs> and it's pickleball is played four times a week at camp. Progress. Okay, so this is not about progressive church movements. This is not some kind of ideology. This is literally listening to Christ's words one more time. Lest we turn to our, with our hearts for his direction in our lives, then he will heal us. Our eyes will be blind. Our ears will be deaf. Our hearts do grow dull. But this morning, I would like to bring you encouragement and think about progressing physically towards me and praying, God, please help me see my heart's direction, because that's why I know Jesus is. Last thing about camp that you can't talk about, or I can't talk about without, um, is, is campfires. So when we think campfires, what do we automatically think about as campers? S'mores, absolutely. S'mores are awesome. And the other thing that you might not know is we do a lot of bonfires in the off season. You know, I joke with people, my first year, I was like, okay, I'm gonna rake all these, all these leaves up. And you know, it's 26 acres of wood. Yeah, that's impossible, so at this point I mulched them, but I also got a little tip from the previous manager, Jimmy, he says, in case you need to make small piles and burn them. Well, sometimes I make bigger piles than small ones, right? Because there's a lot of lids and a lot of leaves, so I was watching this one particular bonfire and it really struck me, and I want to leave here with this today. When we talk about our lives being about community, advocacy, mission, and progressing towards our hearts. Ever watched the bonfire? Okay, so you've watched the bonfire. So imagine this big bonfire going, right? And there's a long oak tree that they're trying to burn off, and there's a big branch over here. And this branch is burning, right? I'm going to ask you to think about the smoke. The smoke of this fire is going where? It's going straight up. And if it's a really big, powerful bonfire, it's going fast, right up, right? So you got this long oak branch over here burning. Where is it smoke going? Yeah, you guys are all doing the, the you all know. So I'm just bringing the reminder that sometimes our outskirts, but when we feel like outcast, the energy of Christ is a vortex. Pulls us back to center. And that's why we come to church on Sunday, to get recentered on Christ and the power of his direct connection for us on this earth with God. So we are over here sometimes, but we're burning, you know, we're all on fire, we're so excited about Christ. But that, you know, we are about unity. DOC is about unity in Christ. And so I just leave you with that image and that thought about how we're all being pulled gently by Christ to the center. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for allowing me to come. That is the good news.